Good evening. Welcome to our Facebook Live event. We're so glad you're here tonight on this nice spring, rainy evening. <laughs> we should all be ducks, right? Yeah. <laughs> but we are so glad that you're here and joining us this evening. We're here to learn about family caregiver support and family assistance program grants that are so important to <clears throat> respite care here in Arkansas, and they're available through CareLink in our friends Alzheimer's Arkansas. My name is Laura Spradley. I'm the outreach coordinator for the Arkansas Geriatric Education Collaborative and we are part of the Department of Geriatrics at the Institute on Aging at UAMS. And with me tonight is Mr. Matt Elmore, and Matt is the Executive Director for Alzheimer's Arkansas. And to his left is Carolyn Torrance, and Carolyn is, our, is the Education and Outreach Director for Alzheimer's Arkansas. Thank and then um, we have Phil Schmidt, who is the founder of Senior Care, and that is a statewide company that provides um, personalized caregiving and respite care assistance for our favorite people, our caregivers. And we're here tonight to talk to all three of these people and learn more about how they can help us with respite. So thank you all for being here. Thank you for having us. Yes. All right. Um, Let's start with a little general statement about tonight is just an educational program. It's not to take the place of any conversation that you would need to have with your doctor about your loved one or your health. So we're here just to talk about education and respite grants. We encourage all of you to send your questions in on Facebook and we'll get to your questions as soon as we can. And if we don't get to you before the show's over, we'll get to you after the show. Um, we thought it'd be important tonight to talk to the audience a little bit about um, aging in America and Arkansas just to kind of tee off the program and some facts that are just <clears throat> blowing my mind ever since I've been in this business is that um, Americans are living longer, we're aging, we're aging well, so yes. we're living into our 90s and our 100s and we uh, all want to live at home, a lot of us, and stay in our home and be well taken care of there and so sometimes as we get older we might need a little help in order to stay at home. So tonight we're gonna to learn about how to do that. Um, Arkansas ranks 15th um, in the percentage of population that's over age 65, so we do have a lot of people over the age of 65 here, and there are approximately 56,000 Arkansans age 65 or older who do have Alzheimer's disease or dementia, so that we know that there is a need out there for caregiving. And approximately 180,000 of you Arkansans are providing unpaid care for a loved one um, that has dementia or Alzheimer's disease. And as you uh, know, obtaining uh, paid caregiving is a huge burden to some people, but there is hope, and we're gonna learn about the answers to some of that burden tonight. So stay tuned, all right? Matt, I'm gonna ask you the first question this evening. If you could help us understand what is the difference between a paid caregiver and an unpaid? <laughs> yeah, uh, so I think when you hear that word caregiver, um, I know to me and to a lot of people, the two things that come to mind are a professional caregiver and then a personal caregiver, and that's a term that we use a lot at Alzheimer's yeah. Arkansas. Um, so of course you know that professional caregiver is going to be a, a nurse or a CNA or someone who is provided from an in-home care agency, but basically just anyone who is a professional and is being paid to provide that caregiving assistance. Okay. Um, and then the other big one that we work with a lot, yes. and you guys, really all of us, um, are those personal caregivers. Yeah. So, yeah, so family Love members, friends. friends, yeah, so your neighbors. Yes, neighbors. Yeah, you're not getting paid to help with that, right. yeah, that assistance. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you Financially paid. That's you know? right. <laughs> your reward is going to yeah. be. <laughs> all right, so for the purposes of the next few questions, let's talk about that unpaid caregiver. Um, we all know that all the various tasks that an unpaid caregiver do can be exhausting. You're making doctor's appointments, uh, making for transportation, all those things, and sometimes that can take a, a toll on the caregiver's health. And they may experience you know, anything from weight gain to weight loss, um, blood pressure issues, some people experience a hard time sleeping because they're worried about their loved one, all those kind of things. Then you have the added stress of maybe they're not getting out as much as they used to, not able to go do the things they used to do. And so tonight we want to talk about how can we take care of the caregiver's health? Because if we don't have a good, healthy caregiver, <laughs> the poor loved one, yeah. they need that. They need that. So um, what would be a solution if someone is thinking they are feeling stressed and overwhelmed? What can they do to help with that feeling? <laughs> yeah, I think the one of the biggest, most important things that we talk about the most is taking a break. 
you know, finding those respite care opportunities, mm-hmm. which is obviously much easier said than done, yes. but there are tons of organizations and businesses that can help mm-hmm. provide and pay for that. And, mm-hmm. yeah. It's like they say, if you ask for help, then yeah. you better be willing to take it. Yes. Yes. Well, yeah. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Reinforce that this evening, that it's okay mm-hmm. to take a break. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, Carolyn, I have a question for you. Okay. We in the business all use the term respite, and you know, I don't think sometimes other people understand what that really means. Can you help them understand? Yes, it's a, a simple definition, but not a simple concept. So <laughs> actually, it's just taking a break, getting rest for the caregiver. So they can be the best caregiver that they can be. Mm-hmm. Just mm-hmm. taking a break. I know um, earlier when I was talking to you, you gave me a great scenario about preventative um, So, So I love to <laughs> I love talk about, analogy. so respite care comes two ways. And for me, I always talk to caregivers about preventative care. <laughs> I love that analogy. It's kind of like a car. We all have cars and we don't wait until the car breaks down. We go get oil changes and if we hear a squeak, something happens, we go get a check out. So caregiving is just like that. Let's not wait until we are broken down and need the help to get respite care, but use it throughout your caregiving experience. Now, there are other people, and sometimes we all, neglect to take care of ourselves. (laughs) But when we do, that is a perfect time as well for respite care. Just call and get the help. Just call and get the help. Can you give me an example of like a real life scenario? Um, can I get respite? Like, I'm gonna be selfish. I wanna get my hair done. Yes. <laughs> Most or definitely. I wanna go out and work when I'm feeling raining. I wanna go out and work in my garden. Yes, that is absolutely respite care. So, respite care can be used for you to go on vacation, go to a movie, get out. But another way we can use respite care is it is hard to invite people in our homes and we don't want someone else in the homes with our loved ones. However, we can still be there while there's somebody providing respite. We can take a nap, we can go out and garden, we can do that crossword puzzle that we wanna do, or watch our favorite TV show while someone is there taking care of the person. That is respite care. That's a great mm-hmm. idea. Yeah, great. and I think we've all been taught for so long that it's not okay to be selfish, <laughs> yeah. but if, you know, you're being incredibly selfless 99% right. of your time. You're absolutely correct. Be selfish every once in a while. But it's not selfish. Yeah. It's a way for you, if you take care of yourself, then you can better mm-hmm. take care of your loved ones. So don't look at it as selfish. Look right. at it as a tool to make sure you can be the best caregiver mm-hmm. yeah. that you can be. And sometimes respite is the person who's getting the respite care being in their home by themselves for yes. a while just to experience what it's like while... Go back. Someone yes. takes them to mm-hmm. the store or do whatever. Yes, exactly. That's a good example a good, as well. That's a great example. Okay, so say I'm out there and I have made this decision. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this. Okay, um, tell me in baby steps what would be the first thing I should do. Should I call you? Should I get online? Should I, what, what would be a good way to just start? Take maybe a baby step. So after you make that great decision <laughs> that you're gonna use respite care, you can call us. Okay. You can call. We will take your call and we can help you with the resources we have available to pay for that respite care and find maybe find someone that can provide that care as well. Mm-hmm. What if I live in Northwest Arkansas? Still call me? You can still call me. <laughs> All right. Cell phones. They're not cell phones. Phones. <laughs> yeah. Plus, we do have a we our services are online, so you can go to yeah. our website. Yeah. All right. All right, I'm going to shift over to you, Matt. You're back on the hot seat here. Uh, the great news, as we told you tonight, is that Alzheimer's Arkansas and Carolee do have a way to help all of you with respite care expenses. So stay tuned because we have two different grants that we're going to be telling you about. We don't want to lose anybody. Right? Yeah, don't think don't, don't it think won't fit for you. We might have fit. something yeah. for us. Yeah. We wanted to do that big commercial beforehand. So uh, what did we decide? Which one do we want to talk about first? Uh, let's start with our CareLink grant. Okay, let's yeah. do that one. Um, it's called Family Caregiver Support? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and that, I, uh, we're able to provide this through a partnership with the organization CareLink, okay. which uh, people, especially in Central Arkansas, are probably right, familiar probably with. Um, and, and this one specifically is for patients who live in Pulaski, 
uh, Saline, Monroe, Prairie, Lone Oak, or Faulkner counties. Um, but like you said, don't give up on us yet. We have another grant for <laughs> everyone in Arkansas. Thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, but this one specifically um, is also available for anyone with any chronic illness. So I know oh. we are okay. Alzheimer's Arkansas, but you don't have to have Alzheimer's disease or dementia to qualify for this one. Okay. So any chronic illness that requires a caregiver, as long as they are 60 years of age or older, okay. um, and you're not already receiving um, any like uh, subsidized or, or in, you know government yeah, assistant paid for okay. caregiving already. Yeah, but it's five hundred dollars. Okay. You can get it twice a year. Just ask that you wait six months apart. Okay. Um, but it's very simple application, and this is strictly for you to use for that respite care. Wow. So you can use this to hire either um, a professional to come in your home and help provide that, mm -hmm. or you can use that to um, hire another family or friend caregiver. Oh. Um, so a, a neighbor, a cousin, your spouse, just... As long as they do not live in the household. Yes. No okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, because this is this is now. for right. you. Something I hear Carolyn say sometimes that I really like is, <laughs> this grant isn't for your loved one. This grant is for you to take that respite time, to yes. have respite care. Okay. Um, so we have that one, and then we have our Family Assistance Program Grant, okay. and you can also receive that one twice a year. It's $350, oh, okay. and it is for anyone in the state. Um, so we do ask for this one that you have a doctor's diagnosis of dementia, um, including Alzheimer's disease, okay. and you can also have those uh, mild cognitive impairments. I was gonna say, what if you only have Okay. Yeah, yeah, um, but it's $350 twice a year, so a total of 700 for the year, oh. and you can use this for that respite care uh, as well. But then this one, we have a little more wiggle room because we, we raise these funds through private donors and grants and events. Oh. So we can also help you with, um, you know, purchasing some incontinence supplies or nutritional oh. supplements if that's what you need. Okay. Um, paying someone to come mow the yard or cook or clean the house, or if you, hey, it'd be really helpful if we had some handlebars in the bathroom. <laughs> um, Help us get caught up in utility bills. And I really, think I, I saw where you can even help with legal services. Yeah, they call you yeah. Like, so yeah. it's time to set that um, POA, yeah, POA or a good. trust or will. We'll okay. help you cover that too. Really, anything that will provide respite that will make life a little bit easier for you. Man, that's great yeah. news. Yeah, and um, you don't have to remember all of those specifics because right. we have it on the website. Um, A L Z, yeah, A R K dot <laughs> org slash grants. You can download the applications, and then if you still need some uh, questions answered, give us a call. We have a 24-7-1-800 number, and that's 1-800-689-6090. Great. And that, that is a lot of information, so it's yeah. best to... give us but a call. We'll explain you, it if you again. don't have access to the internet, mm -hmm. call. Yeah. Yes. And you do mail things. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 If you don't have access to a printer, it. we'll mail you an application. Got it. Yeah. Great. Okay. So we've covered the grants. Now it's Phil's turn. All right, Phil. Um, we're going to take some questions from the audience soon, so hang on. But I want to, I want you to hear what Phil has to say too, so you might you might have questions for him. Um, I know if I was having to pick someone to come stay with my loved one, probably the the biggest question I would have is, uh, how do I know what what is your what is your company? All these other companies, what are they what are they going to do to make sure that I get the right person? Well, kind of and first and first of all. Let's go back to the to the individual that a person may have that's been staying with. That's true. With, yeah. If if they do uh, have someone, um, that's fantastic. Um, sometimes that person needs respite, right? <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And, uh, and so we uh, we are able to provide services like like that. Um, and and if you if a person picks an individual that um, is not associated with a company, they need to make sure that they know a lot about them. They need to make sure that they have a way of of, of checking them out to make sure that they, for one thing, have the skills that they need to have. On a company like mine, um, a company like mine and like several others out there like mine, um, of which there are all over the state of Arkansas, um, we would, would tend to, to run background checks, random drug testing, uh, go back and check on their, their references, uh, and really be able to pick that caregiver who has those skills, I think it's important as this disease progresses to be able to have those skills that are necessary to take care of that person in every who needs the, the care in every stage. And I think that's very important. Um, the other thing is, is that someone who can fit in with that schedule 
that the person who's needing a respite is going to, to need. Um, so a company such as Senior Care and others out there like that would have caregivers who are available at night or available during the day or available on Saturdays and Sundays and whatnot. And a lot of times that's, um, that's a very important puzzle to put together when somebody's looking at a certain time slot for care. I know we were talking before the show, you actually sit down and do or other companies do too, but a care plan that says Absolutely. what are the what are the loved ones' hobbies or what did they used to enjoy doing and try to find someone that likes to it's talk very, about those kind of things. It's very those. absolutely, and I think we're important. It would be important to to sit down with family members and find out what the hobbies are and what are some of the special things that that person likes, whether it's a certain kind of food or Music. likes to walk out in the garden yeah. or, or wants to go to the grocery store or or, or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. And it's very important to follow a specific care plan. The more specific and tailored to that, to that client, we call them clients, um, yeah. to that client, the, the, the easier that that care is and the better the bonding experience. Mm -hmm. That's great, great news. Okay, and so I've made this big decision. I'm gonna get some respite. I, I'm gonna get a, a company or someone to help me out. Um, t tell me, should I take baby steps? Like should we do maybe a two hour long respite and then graduate into four hours? or a day before I just call you and say, oh, I want to go on a cruise for a week. Probably should not take that big. I think, I think that really to have that kind of, of lead time is always good. Mm -hmm. To have that lead time to be able to, to test drive that caregiver, <laughs> yeah. for, for lack of a better word, to be able to get them together, to be able to make sure that, uh, that, that, that everybody is, for lack of a better word, singing all the same piece of music about what the needs are and what the likes and dislikes are. I think it's a very important thing to do, especially before going on an extended trip or something like that. In any short period of time that um, that, that caregiver could come by, visit, um, sit down with the person, and just get in their environment and get to know them, the better. Um, it's the caregivers can and do become very bonded to to Alzheimer's and, and dementia um, uh, clients, and, um, and and it's a very it's a, it's a great thing. I think the more that they're together, the better. And um, and yes, I think if, if that's if that's possible to have those visits in advance, it's super. Give everybody peace of mind. I mm -hmm. Absolutely. Exactly. Do we have any questions? Yes, we do. We're going to take some questions from the audience. Um, let's see. We have a question from Allison. What age should you start long-term care? Oh boy. <laughs> That's a that's a tough one. It's going to depend. I think on it's, the it does not depend on age. Yeah. It depends on the health, the like health their the, where their health is, yeah. like the needs when it comes to health, yeah. and the uh, ha the services, the abilities of the caregiver. Like, is it too much? Are there things that you can no longer do? Is there things uh, a in home care? service can no longer provide. So it's really not based on an age, it's based on the health and the, the services that they need. Of the person. Mm -hmm. yeah. The individual well, needs, needs so, yeah. specific needs just would dictate yeah. different and, and the abilities of the caregivers. Because mm -hmm. the reality is, some, depending on the caregiver, you may not be able to provide that care that they well, need. Well, you want to be able to lift them. To lift them like them. that. Some people can bathe and lift, but right. other people can't. And there's some things that uh, in-home care agencies, such as Phil and others, can do. However, when it becomes more 24-hour related, like, it eat up your resources. So that's when you start looking into, into long-term long -term care. care. Well, and one, one thing, too, is that, is that sometimes it's called a crawl, walk, run, and that's where the care may start out as companion care in a very small way, mm -hmm. and then it progresses as the as the need progresses, and and gets to as you mentioned to um, some very personal care mm -hmm. needs that um, may not be that companion care person anymore. Mm -hmm. It may be someone who really has those kinds of specific skills. Mm -hmm. Phil, we have a question about um, are these resources available in the rural areas of Arkansas? Absolutely <laughs> available in the rural area. In fact, we were talking about that before um, the, the Facebook webinar tonight. And really, we have, for instance, a lot of caregivers who live in rural areas all over this state. 
and they drive to different areas in those rural areas and into the city and know of a lot of situations where caregivers can live in those communities and take care of people in those communities or within a few miles of where they live. So that is really, um, don't ever let that be a deterrent living okay. in a rural area. I'm from a rural area of the state and there's, there's caregiving uh, resources all around. And let's not forget about the Area Agency on Aging. Uh, our state Absolutely. is broke up into six divisions, and they as well, a lot of those, have the same respite care resources that we have. They spend those monies differently, but each AAA has respite care funds. So contact, find out what county you live in, and contact that agency. And if you can't do it, give us a call. We'll help you get connected yeah. with them. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, and we have another question. How should you help or encourage someone you think might be hesitant on this whole respite idea? And I know that's that's a tough one. So it's I hear this like quite often, almost every day. What I would what I want people to consider when you're a caregiver and you're hesitant is a lot of times it is about you, but it's not about you. Because how can you continue to be a caregiver if you're worn out? Statistically, and uh, if you're over the age of 70 and you're taking care of your loved one, a spouse, or, and you're over 70, some research says you're most likely to pass away before the person you're taking care of. So mm -hmm. a third of those caregivers will pass away. A third of those caregivers will have health issues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's one of those pre then if things we do Absolutely. so think about don't think about yourself mm -hmm. think about who's going to take care of your loved right. one mm -hmm. if something happens to you mm -hmm. and i'll be honest i have met people who've had heart attacks and had to put mm -hmm. their loved ones in in nursing homes and long-term mm -hmm. care because they didn't take care of themselves mm -hmm. we've had we've had real life situations based on exactly what you're talking about and i think in order for for a, a a respite or for a caregiver to stay fresh they've got to get away they've got to go out and mm -hmm. and and get away for a little bit in order for them to be the kind of caregiver in their in their body and mind that they need to be when they get back into that home again and begin providing that that care that's so crucial I think, something, oh, sorry. No, no. I think something that I hear Carolyn mention a lot and a few other people is to you know like someone may be hesitant to use respite care because they don't want to miss out on any chunk of time with their loved one. Yeah. But kind of looking at that longer term, that bigger picture, is is it better for you to miss out on that couple hours so that yeah. you can have some respite time, some respite care, so that the rest of your time with them right. is, is even better. better. Yeah. Yeah. It's very important to look at the long haul. Mm -hmm. I think right. we have a question right. for you, Phil. Okay. What yeah. if the patient is refusing respite care? Uh, you know, good question, and um, and and we 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 get that we get that fairly often that the patient refuses respite care, um, and sometimes it's a matter of being able just to find that right person and break the ice, and find out that it's not as bad as it seemed like it was, and as everybody begins to go out and work in the garden together or began to talk about hunting or whatever that person's mm -hmm. hobbies are, all of those, all of those, uh, those hesitancies really kind of melt away. Yeah. You know? And I think it's important sometimes how we introduce people. I know mm -hmm. we want to introduce people as caregivers and let you, let you mean like somebody that's going to help take care of you. But as a, an adult, we, may feel like we're trying to be babysit and you know like you want me to have a babysitter but introducing those caregivers as friends that's or right. some yeah. and somebody that's there to build a relationship that's and right. not making it so caregiver i'm mm -hmm. here to take care of you because you need somebody to take care of you i think that's, that's important idea. that's right that is that is a very good point and and you know really introducing this friends and just finding commonality mm -hmm. and breaking down the walls it's it seems like the and the good news about this is for the most part it really seems like it's always 
a lot bigger deal in everybody's mind than it ends it's up being reality. Yeah. That's true. It's yeah. usually a bigger deal in the caregiver's <laughs> mind than in the person that's being taken care of. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And it, that's, it's amazing how it falls in place. Yes. Yeah. And that's one of those benefits you get from using a professional caregiver is that your people have that training of how to introduce themselves. That's and how right. To kind of start the conversation in the situation for success. I th exactly. I think it's really important that, that, that a person who is going to be taking care of someone with this disease has that kind of training. They, pro they approach them in different ways. And, and, um, and, and for instance, um, they don't sweat the small things. If, if, the, sky's, if the sky's blue and, and the person says it's red, then who cares? You know, give up the little things. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, uh, and I think it's just important to, to have that kind of training. It's very mm -hmm. important. So, Matt, let's go back and tell us a little bit about the requirements to prove chronic conditions in our dementia. Mm -hmm. That's a question from our mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's very simple. Um, so really all we need is just something from the physician or the nurse practitioner, really, whoever provided that diagnosis. Okay. They can put it on the letterhead, which most, you know, healthcare providers are used to providing proof of a diagnosis, mm -hmm. but they can put it on a letterhead. They can shoot us an email, a fax. They can have it on a prescription pad yes. um, that basically just shows your loved one's name, so the person, the patient receiving the care, their name, their date of birth, and the diagnosis. And, and they require a caregiver. Yes, yeah, and that it requires a caregiver. So once you submit that to us, we're going to keep that in your file. Um, so uh, something else we didn't mention earlier is our grants aren't mutually exclusive. So you can get both of the grants. Oh, okay. um, so once you send us your diagnosis for one of them, we can hang on to that so you don't have to get that every time. Because we don't want to be another burden for uh, you. Yeah. We want to make it as easy as possible. Well, that's great news. Yeah. Hope everyone heard that. Okay. <laughs> okay, here's another question. Oh, boy, I think this might be Phil. My <laughs> grandmother disliked every caregiver. What do I do? Oh, I've, I've, every, ran, into, I've ran into that. that those, are the, I, I, those grandmothers that dislike these caregivers are, you know, they, they um, need to bring more It's talk. a lot of fun. It's, <laughs> you know, the, but I'll tell you what it, what it, I've never run into anybody yet that jumps up and down and really excited about somebody coming in and invading their private space and begin to follow them around or work with them or what have you. I really feel like, though, personally, from from the business uh, that that of, of caregiving and professional caregiving companies that are out there, that if you really find that right fit, and and really if the family, mm -hmm. where possible, can be a hundred percent united mm -hmm. in the decision that grandmother, we want you to stay in your home as long as you can. In, in, in a very nice but very direct way, let them know what we don't want to happen and that we don't want them to fall and have to go to another place and we want them to live at home. And I think that showing that united front helps a lot. And, and, if, and if we do our jobs right, we try to show grandmother that they can have that independence back Mm -hmm. that they may not have realized they've lost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They can get back and go to the grocery store. They can go visit friends at church meetings. Mm -hmm. They can go do those things mm -hmm. that they um, that they want to do. Mm -hmm. and, and it's a really a, a community effort with family mm -hmm. to just get over that hump. And sometimes it's tough. Yeah. But it eventually, with the right person using these various skills together, I think it, it, can, come, it can come around. Mm -hmm. I've seen some of the hardest ones in the world <laughs> fall pretty easy after a period of time. And yeah. something that I've heard you say too before is a dementia patient today is not the same dementia, dementia patient, patient tomorrow. That's correct. Yeah. And sometimes it's triggers, like maybe they don't like their hair today or the colored blouse they have on. However, it is, if you have a united front and un really even explaining, I some, sometimes I think with dementia patients, we almost forget that they are still capable in some points, mm -hmm. that our goal is to make sure you stay at home. Right. And with a personal care plan as well, using what your 
loved one likes. If she liked to cook or liked something, engaging her in, I've had people to say, we want you to teach somebody how to bake bread because they want to learn. And the caregiver comes in and say, hey, I heard you know how to bake bread. And that starts a relationship because they have this knowledge and skill and they want to share. That's how we Absolutely. are. So yeah. it's just finding that connection. That's yeah. right. And that may be an opportunity to, to start relying on those the personal caregivers. That's so true. if grandma doesn't like anyone, mm -hmm. grandma may be more familiar with another grandchild, a cousin, a, a child. And I know that can seem a little intimidating at first, you know, because we, we hear about all the back on tracks and the training and everything, but there are opportunities for, for personal, personal caregivers to get that training. I mean, I know of an organization, uh, Alzheimer's <laughs> Arkansas, that has monthly lunch and learns in nine different that. cities around the state right. and full day caregiver workshops. So those resources are there and available to train the personal caregivers. It also seems to be sometime that that the person who's putting up the barriers mm -hmm. really knows in their heart of hearts mm -hmm. that they need the care. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they know that they have been able to maybe bluff the family into saying not doing it, not gonna happen. But when the family really it chooses those those tr those those options, mm -hmm. and they all get on the same page together. It come it comes pretty clear. Mm -hmm. So we have a question about reimbursement and Medicare. Mm -hmm. So it says Medicare pays for weekday respite. Would mm -hmm. we still reimburse for uh, those? Our so we so uh, remember we have two grants. All right. Um. So the the care link uh, the five hundred dollar thousand a year grant. Uh, would not be able to reimburse for that individual who receives okay. that, you know, like services that are provided through the Medicare, but our family assistance grant um, for every resident in the state of Arkansas, the $350 one, um, you still could receive that one. Okay. Yeah. All right. Great. But I do like to say, mm -hmm. we do have to run mm -hmm. we our applications through a system, and mm -hmm. the system decides, yes, that, those eligibilities. Those Oh, okay. For so, the care link. For the care link. Okay. Okay. So if you don't don't deny yourself, yes. let us deny you. Because yeah. sometimes oh, okay. you think yeah. you're getting like services mm -hmm. and you're really not. Yeah. Okay. So, give, us call. give us a call. Give us a call. We'll talk you through it all. Yes. We, we have to know all that stuff. Yeah. You yeah. don't have to remember. I don't have to. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we have to know that. And chances are if, if we don't have something for you, we know someone that does. Okay. Well, that's so, great. Yeah. Everybody, I hope everyone heard that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you give us your phone number? Yeah. Again? Yeah. So the um, the the twenty four hour hotline mm -hmm. is one eight hundred six eight nine six zero nine zero. But if you are calling during the day, you can call our office uh, during the normal business hours. To that five zero one two two four zero zero two one. So I think the important thing to bring up is, and I kind of talked about it before, is how do we get our funding? Mm -hmm. Now, with the CareLink grant, it is Title III funding. Mm -hmm. And that is how all the area agencies on aging mm -hmm. get their funds. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm like, if you don't live outside of our six counties that we uh, provide those services to, contact your area agency on aging, because they have Title III mm -hmm. funds for okay. caregiving. Mm -hmm. So for our, our family assistance, our program grant, mm -hmm. we we get money from donations and we go out and we beg <laughs> for funds because we, we want to help you. We have, yeah. Yes, we <laughs> have, work hard for you. Yeah. Yes, we yeah. have board members and events because their heart is in this and they mm -hmm. understand how difficult it is mm -hmm. to care you. Because yeah. it's not a secret how hard it is. Yeah. People know Definitely. and they want to yeah. help us. Help caregivers. And you you want this money to just sit in the bank forever and ever? No. <laughs> no. Y'all want it to yeah. be yeah. We want it to be Yeah, used. we want to run out. <laughs> you want yeah. to run out of Make us run out, yeah. All right, great. Well, I don't think we have any more questions, mm -hmm. uh, so I want to turn it back to you three. Does anybody have any thoughts or comments? Did we miss anything? We've covered the grants. We've given out phone numbers. Yeah. And we, we want, want that money used. used. And we want people mm -hmm. to use respite care. Yeah. It's important Absolutely. to your health and mm -hmm. your family's health that 
this that you take that time out to take care of yourself and be proactive about it don't yeah, don't true. wait until you get sick don't wait until you get too exhausted be, be proactive about it exactly mm -hmm. great comment. yeah and if you think of a question later yes call us comment on the facebook stream we'll answer yeah, you, we'll get back to you. Um, i think we know how to get a hold of both of these <laughs> individuals <you>. so <laughs> Turn my phone off. Right yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we really, really appreciate everyone tuning in tonight, and we hope you've learned something. I know I did. Um, and I want to thank Matt and Carolyn and Phil for taking your time this mm -hmm. evening. Um, we hope all of this has been helpful. I think we've gone over the website, but I'll go over it one more time for Alzheimer's Arkansas. It's www.alzark.com, and their um, daytime number is 501 224 0021 and they will mail you information if you can't access the internet as well and be sure and check out our um, AJEC, um, Arkansas Geriatric Education Collaborative website at agec.uams.edu and we have lots of other free um, programs for older adults that, that we have on our website. Um, this program has been co-sponsored by, I said before, the University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences, the Arkansas Geriatric Education Collaborative, which is part of a federal um, Health Resources and Services Administration grant, and it, it's, it's possible to do all this because of that grant, so we thank that grant. And thank you all again for being here, mm -hmm. and everybody okay. stay dry and have a great rest of your Good evening. <laughs>